Hi folks, welcome to RJ Impact. Today we're going to be looking at week three of the SPF trial, a week in which we saw another close insider of SPF take the stand, a week in which we saw some additional compelling evidence to support the prosecution's case, but also we saw some of the fighting spirit that has been lacking in the defence so far and saw them land a blow or two of their own. Nishad Singh was head of engineering at FTX. He knew Sam Bankman Freed from high school, where he was a friend of Gabe Freed, SBF's brother, and made his way to an executive within FTX from being a software developer. He was originally intimidated by the formidable, brilliant Wunderkind, but this turned to shame following his discovery that FTX executives were enriching themselves with customer funds. He learned or noticed of a hole in the company's finances in September 2022. He noticed $8 billion was missing, but he still approved transactions that he implicitly knew was from customer or user funds. That money had been swept sideways to Alameda Research, and it was established that he'd pled guilty to this. It's probably fair to say that his testimony, to some extent, knitted together the previous testimony of Caroline Ellison and Gary Wang. The hole was enormous, he'd said. We heard that he'd raised the lavish spending by FTX executives with Sam Bankman Freed, and at that point, Sam was not happy with him. He said that he'd originally considered that FTX had either been taken advantage of, or as he put it, thought that we'd been fleeced for $20 million. He said that Sam Bankman Freed fired back at him, it was people like me who were seeding doubt in the company, he said. Whilst that's a bit of a high-level overview, the prosecution actually used Singh to show how Sam Bankman Freed was the ultimate decision-maker and would ignore members of his team who objected to investments and donations and sponsorships, etc., with celebrities and politicians, etc., Singh was able to actually paint quite a vivid picture of a number of occasions where he spoke with SBF and the prosecution helped by providing pictures and images to accompany his testimony. So on the occasion where he raised the hole in FTX's and Alameda Research's balance sheet, it went like this. They met on the balcony of a penthouse, the one with the pool, and here the prosecution helped with a picture of the balcony and apparently Barbara Freed, Sam's mother, looked incredulous as she saw the luxury balcony appear on the screen. It was around 8 or 9pm, and Singh paced anxiously around the balcony as he spoke with Sam. Sam said, I'm not sure what there is to worry about. And Singh said, what about the $13 billion Alameda owed to FTX? Right, that... Sam Bankman Freed replied, We're a little short on our deliverable. How short? Well, they could pay back five billion of the money. A cool eight billion dollars less than they owed. And on asking how he felt about discovering the hole in the balance sheet, I was blindsided and horrified, he said. I felt really betrayed. Another focus on the lavish spending was on a $200 million Alameda investment into K5 Global. Now, this is a VC firm owned by Michael Kives, and Kives hosted a Super Bowl party. Hillary Clinton, Doug Emhoff, Katy Perry, Orlando Bloom, Leonardo DiCaprio, Jeff Bezos, Ted Sarandos, Kendall Jenner, Chris Jenner, Corey Gamble were there. You get the picture? SBF had told the others that the investment was essentially to earn infinite connections. So Singh was asked to read the names and briefly describe what each one of them uh, did. Kendall and Chris Jenner, I honestly could not tell you what they do. And this created a wave of laughter in the courtroom. And Sarandos and Gamble, he didn't recognise at all. Singh said about this that he told um, Sam that proximity to these sorts of celebs would be value extractive and toxic to FTX culture. If we must go through this, it must not go through FTX, Singh recalled telling Bankman Freed. It should be Sam's money, not FTX money. And Singh said his protestations about this didn't yield any results. Another investment was in Genesis Digital Assets, and this is a Bitcoin mining company, And the idea of Bitcoin mining perplexed Judge Lewis Kaplan. And he asked for an explanation. Singh explained that these were banks of computers solving puzzles in order to get a reward 
and add a block of transactions to the blockchain. Apparently Kaplan sighed and said, oh, well, I'm sure that's the best I'm going to get, to which there was more courtroom laughter. We then saw a spreadsheet of various endorsement deals, including the ones we've heard about like Steph Curry, Tom Brady, Giselle Bündchen, the FTX Arena, Larry David and so on. And in total, Bankman Freed's entities spent $1.13 billion on this spreadsheet on endorsement deals. I think the prosecution have drilled home the point that lavish and excessive spending was endemic under SBF's watch. So focusing in on the use of customer funds for all this spending anyway, in a clear statement that the customer funds diversions were deliberate from the start, that he was aware from FTX's inception that Alameda bank accounts had been used to store FTX customer funds. And don't forget that Singh had actually worked at Alameda before FTX. And apparently the move was initially designed to circumvent the whole trouble FTX had actually opening bank accounts. It was actually Singh that undertook the system's programming that gave Alameda special privileges. And this allowed it to draw and borrow etc. from FTX without limit, remember. This was directed by SBF and Gary Wang. So there you go. I think the prosecution have now made the direct link between SBF and Alameda's use of customer funds direct from end to end. Now all the pieces appear to be in place to support that. The way Singh put it was that Alameda could withdraw money that it didn't have. I won't go into detail with lots of spreadsheets and lots of numbers being bandied around by the prosecution, but essentially because of the buggy accounting system and the special privileges that Alameda had, it gave rise to an $11 billion hole in FTX's balance sheet. I have to confess here that sometimes they talk about $8 billion, sometimes $16 billion, sometimes $14 billion, now $11 billion. What is the hole and what was the hole in Alameda's balance sheet? I guess nobody really knows. Anything to do with a lack of accountants within FTX and Alameda? Oh yeah, I'm sure it was. On one occasion, Sam Bankman-Fried told Singh to transfer tokens he had, these were Serum tokens, SRM, onto Alameda's balance sheet in a deliberate attempt to fool the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, CFTC. And Singh said he didn't do this because it felt wrong. Really, that is just blatant attempt to incite fraud to my mind. Whatever else you can call it. I don't know how the defence would even try to explain that one away. Short of calling Nishad a liar. On the campaign donations front, Singh said that Ryan Salome would root funds from Singh's own bank accounts. Yes, his own bank accounts and trust accounts to recipients. Essentially, they were trying to hide the fact that it was all directed by Sam Bankman-Fried. But he would be called up and asked to approve transfers by providing the banking code transactions, etc. And apparently, he'd signed a load of blank checks and given these to Gabe Bankman-Fried, who then wrote them out, presumably in favour of politicians and PACs, etc. And as if the accounting frauds weren't blatant enough, Singh said he also went through the FTX system and systematically marked, i.e. changed, a load of transactions in the system. These were staking transactions, which I won't go into detail about, but essentially these were revenues that FTX earned. Anyway, he went through the system and changed the dates on those so that they were all 2021, and this inflated the 2021 revenue over $1 billion. It was the defence's turn next and they were and are trying to make the point that those close to SBF, the witnesses that have testified, have essentially been trying to save their own skins at the expense of Sam Bankman-Fried. Therefore, they're saying what the prosecution would want them to say. Let's see what the defence did with cross-examination Mishad. It was Mark Cohen up for the defence leading... Anyway, earlier on talking about taking the money from customers for Alameda, Nishad had made the comments that it was evil, and that's pretty damning for Sam Bankman-Fried, obviously. However, under cross-examination, we found out that Singh actually took out a loan from FTX of nearly $4 million to buy a house in Washington. And the kicker to this? Well, it was after Nishad says he found out about the misuse of customer monies. 
Strike one, I guess. And the next blow, why did Nishad say that one billion on sponsorships was excessive? The defence then pointing out he's head of engineering. In other words, what on earth does he know about it? Fair point. Strike two, I think. And about the $30 million penthouse, was it really expensive to live in or too expensive? Nishad had made the point that SBF and so on had been living like billionaires. And the defence made the point that surely billionaires don't live like that. In other words, in some kind of jointly owned or rented penthouse. When this was put to Nishad, he said he didn't know and felt confused about it. Not confused enough to move out, though, said Cohen. Strike three, I guess. Another incident that Nish had relayed was that in about November or December 2021, he became aware of a bug in Alameda's system that actually overstated how much Alameda owed FTX. We've heard about this before, and to cut a long story short, the bug actually overstated the amount by about 8 billion. It should be 8 billion, the amount shown was around about 16 billion. We'd heard from Yadida earlier that he said that Alameda did owe FTX an awful amount of money and was concerned about it. Singh said he wasn't concerned at the time because he assumed that Alameda had the assets to repay FTX. Now the point about all of this, you heard me say a short while ago that it was in September 2022 that Singh testified he'd become aware that Alameda was using customer funds. But we've now just heard it was November, December the previous year that he'd found out that there was this huge balance that Alameda owed FTX. Yadida had put two and two together to understand that Alameda was using customer funds and he was only dealing with the bug. So why didn't Head of Engineering Singh know about this? Or perhaps he's embellishing things to put himself in a good light. Who knows? So quite a few points there. The prosecution came back on redirect and as one commentator put it, they made a good point in establishing that FTX was essentially a rat's nest of scams. And while Singh seemed to have some of his credibility dented by the defence, quite a, an important thing came out. Apparently the money he'd borrowed or was given, whatever, from FTX he'd actually felt morally obligated to repay. And although he wasn't legally obligated, uh, and the reason for that is because there was actually no paperwork associated with any of it, he, or the loans, he just found huge sums transferred to his bank accounts, he testified. They were loans in a loose sense, he said. They weren't really loans. So this Moral obligation and this repayment of these loans when perhaps he didn't have to, who knows, was actually used by the prosecution to perhaps paint him in a slightly better light than previously. It beggars belief, doesn't it? You know, what are they trying to say? That here is a convicted fraudster, what, with a small F instead of a capital F? Um, your guess is as good as mine. And that sort of argument is really the defence's best approach to paint the witnesses, the key witnesses, as really in it for themselves against SBF, as we've heard before. Perhaps they did a good job on this one. I'm not sure. It's um, 50 of one and half a dozen of another, I guess. So that was Nishad Singh, one of the key witnesses in week three. We'll catch up with the rest of week three in due course. And so as the hand of subscribe hits the notification bell on the loan penthouse, it ponders whether writing blank checks for others to use as they see fit is really in the normal course of business. Bye for now.